Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Joe for Wednesday Bible Study. I'm so glad you joined me. Uh, today, we're going to do a continuation from what we spoke of uh, at home worship on Sunday, and it's about marriage. And today, we're going to dig into the Word of God, uh, where He instructs us how to have a successful marriage and to serve Him and please Him and do His will. Amen? Amen. So, brothers and sisters, if you have a pen or a pencil, you can write down the scriptures, but I'm going to put the scriptures in the description so you can always look back and uh, remind yourself, share them with your spouse, others, to bring them to salvation and have a successful marriage. Now, first, we have to lay a foundation, the Holy Spirit, touch my heart, my mind, my soul this morning, that it's important that we read this verse first. So we're looking at Matthew chapter 18, verse 3. And it's when the disciples asked Jesus, who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And this is how he responds. And he said, Surely I say to you, unless you are converted and become as a little child, you will by no means enter into the kingdom of heaven. Do you understand, brothers and sisters? Forget about being the greatest in the, in the kingdom of heaven. But you have to humble yourself as a little child to even get there. Okay, brothers and sisters? God hates the proud. He says he does not listen to the proud prayer. Well, brothers and sisters, he hears and sees everything. That means he doesn't answer the proud prayer. You understand? You have to be humble just to get there. And you have to be humble to listen to this message to receive it well, and to please God and do His will. Amen? Amen. So what we do is we're going to start at the very beginning, which is Genesis. And in Genesis, as you all know, Adam and Eve are told that they can pretty much do anything except for one thing. God wants to test them. Tells them not to eat a particular fruit on a particular tree. Now, we know that Eve sins first and then talks her husband into sinning, but he sins. Wants to blame it on Eve, but he still sins. But she sins first, and we don't know how long Adam sins. It could be days, weeks, could be years. But God lays down a punishment for both. The man, he is to work in the fields to make his food. No longer just is there for him to enjoy. And this is what it says about the woman in verse 16 of chapter 3. To the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. That means pain when you're having a baby. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband. And he shall rule over you. Rule over you. All right, brothers and sisters? Keep that in mind. If you don't like what you've just heard, okay, remember the first verse that we read. You must humble yourself even to make it to heaven. Amen? Amen. Now we're going to turn to Ephesians chapter 5, and we'll read... Uh, verses 22 through 27. Why submit to your own husband as to the Lord? For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wife be to their own husband in everything. Now I want to emphasize that, brothers and sisters, in everything. Okay? God has put the man over the woman in the marriage. And he has the last say so. He has the final decision in all the decisions that are made in the marriage. And 
So she has to submit to her husband as if the church has to submit to Christ. The word is the truth, brothers and sisters. This is the gospel we're reading right now. And you can't argue with it if you're a born-again Christian. If you believe Jesus died for your sins and mine, you have repented of your sins and been filled with the Holy Spirit, you're not going to argue with God's word. If you are, you're a fool. Amen? First step to wisdom is what? Fear God. Let's keep reading. And I want to emphasize, this message is not to convict, condemn anyone, okay? I'm not judging anyone. I'm just sharing with you what the Word of God says for us to obey, to adhere, for instruction for a successful marriage and to be a successful Christian, one that will go to heaven and he says, well done, well done, faithful and loving servant, okay? That's what we all want to hear, brothers and sisters. All right, so then it says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. You see, brothers and sisters, there's another scripture that says, love covers a multitude of sins. That's Jesus. That's Yeshua. Who died for you and me. For our sins, not his. He was perfect in every way. He came as God's son, eternal son, was here in existence with God, the Father, and came down from his kingdom to come in a human form to die a painful crucifixion for you and me. That's love that covers a multitude of sins. Brothers and sisters, if you're married today, do you have enough love to cover your wife's sins? Think about it. He died. For us, and we need to be willing to die for our wives. Take a bullet for your wife. Protect your wife. Lift your wife up into a pedestal. Take care of her. Bless her. Love her. As Christ loved the church. Amen? Amen. Reading from 26 that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water of the word. What's the word? What we're reading right now, brothers and sisters, it's the Bible. Every husband is the priest of that family, of the children and his wife. And you need to read the Bible together if you're married. You and your wife need to read the Bible every day together. Doesn't mean you're not going to read on your own. Absolutely you are. But take a little time, maybe before dinner, after dinner, before breakfast, after breakfast. Take a certain time of day and read a chapter out of the Bible. Even if it's just a verse. But read the Bible together, the Word. All right? Ask the Holy Spirit to open your both, your eyes, your ears, your heart, your mind, your soul to His, His Holy Word. And ask the Holy Spirit for both of you to help each other understand it so you can please God and do His will. That's washing her with the Word. Amen? That He might present her to Himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish all right we want to present our wives at the great white throne judgment to the father without blemish holy and acceptable to him yes and in second peter 3 14 it says be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blemish amen brothers and sisters that's all of our goal whether you're married or not. 
And if you're not married, please listen to the message because Lord willing, he has somebody out there for you. And you will be blessed as he wants to bless all of his children. Now turn to uh, Matthew chapter 22, verse 30. Now let me set the stage. What's happening here, the Pharisees, they're always trying to test Jesus, trap him in something, make him lie or catch him in a lie. And they want to trick him. And so they say, because back then, the Mosaic Law, if, if your brothers died and the wife didn't have any children, you were to take your brother's wife and have children to, so the name would continue on. And so they will read three verses from chapter 22, Matthew 24. It says, saying, Teacher Moses said that if a man dies having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up the offspring for his brother. And 28, it says, therefore, uh, let me just tell you what happens. Then they lay the scenario that the brother dies and there's seven brothers. Each one takes a turn being the woman's husband. Do you understand? Each time the wife serves each husband and obeys him, as the word says to do. All right? So then they propose the question, Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife of the seven will she be? For they all had her. And Jesus answers and says to them, You are mistaken, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels of God in heaven. So if you're a woman here today, and you're listening to this, and you have been serving your husband, obeying him in everything, praise God, because you're doing the right thing. But if you're not, and you're being convicted, and you're going, whoa, I have to change. I have to humble myself. Okay? And maybe you're feeling a little sad about that. But this is, good. This is to lift you, brothers and sisters, in particular the sisters. Because in heaven... You will not be serving any man. You will not be obeying anyone but God the Father and Jesus. You understand? There will be equality there. Complete equality. All right? Which would have happened in the beginning if Eve had not sinned. But it is what it is. And so you have something great to look forward to. We all do. To be with Jesus, Yeshua, forever and ever. Man, amen. All right, just a couple more. Turn with me to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. We'll read 2 through 5. Instruction for the marriage. Nevertheless, because of sexual morality, let each man have his own wife and let each woman have her own husband. Let the husband render to his wife the affection due her. And likewise also the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise the husband does not have authority over the own, his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another except for consent for a time, we're talking about sex, that you may give yourself to fasting and prayer and come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Brothers and sisters, God gave us sex an enjoyable thing for us, for your wife and your husband, not for adultery, he hates adultery. And if you are denying one or the other for that need, that desire that we all have when we get married, the devil is going to tempt that person, one of those persons or both. 
He wants to steal, kill, and destroy what is God's. Do not let him. Obey, obey the word of God. Submit yourself to your, your loved one. Do you understand? You want the marriage to survive. The number one reason for divorce is adultery, infidelity, being unfaithful. God hates divorce. That was the message Sunday. So this is very important. Remember, the message today is to help your marriage to be successful and to please God and do His will. Amen? So I'll finish with this. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus, his first beatitude, it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom in heaven. Brothers and sisters, if you're feeling a contrite heart right now, you have remorse for maybe uh, something that was read here. You feel bad. And you know you need help. And you've humbled yourself to know that. God is there to lift you up. Jesus is there to lift you up. Jesus is there to help you change. If you humble yourself to him and have remorse and want to change. And he will help you change and help you be a pleasing wife to your husband. And a pleasing husband to your wife. Most importantly, to please God and do His will. Amen? Amen. So brothers and sisters, I love you. And this message was with love and kindness. And I pray that all of you do the best you can to please God and do His will. And remember to pray up and read up every day and keep the love of Yeshua, Jesus, in your heart and we'll all be together with our Lord and Savior forever and ever. Amen.